See, a family-run business has many strengths and weaknesses. So on the strength side, it has focus, it has alignment of interest, and it has a long-term orientation. On the weakness side, it is less meritocratic, traditionally as we've seen in India. It is sometimes more capital constrained, and it has key man types of risks. When you take it on a net basis, I think family businesses are a driver of economic growth. On an incremental basis, they provide disproportionate employment. And therefore, they're a force that we need to harness and optimize in any economy. And Germany has shown that. See, succession event risk is a big issue in any company. You can see it in political parties. You can see it in big companies such as Infosys or Tata Sons. You can see it in small family-owned businesses. You see it in India. You see it in the US. You'll see it everywhere. And these transitions typically take three to four years where uh, new management and new CEOs are appointed three, four years in advance. They overlap with existing CEOs and so on and so forth. And sometimes it doesn't go smoothly. In family-owned businesses, people don't give these kind of gaps sometimes. It happens a little bit more abruptly, which is why it causes bigger problems. But transition risk is there everywhere. And Indian young, smaller, family-oriented businesses need to manage it better. See, I think the gender biases that have been traditionally in Indian society are slowly uh, uh, getting removed. So if you look at girls' education levels, if you look at women coming into family businesses, those trends are all in the right direction. And I think in the next 10 years, you'll see many more women CEOs in multinationals, in family businesses. You already see women in policy, as economists, in government. And I think the trends are very, very healthy.